Hey, this is 5 a.m. Mr. Scrum. I hope all is doing well. It is a Saturday, though it's 7 o'clock, so it's kind of later than uh, 5 a.m. Reason being is I had to drive a couple hours, so I've been up since 4 a.m. driving. To, I'm going to teach a little class this weekend. This is Greg Mester. I am an Agile coach and Scrum Master. Depending on where it is and what I'm doing, I jump different roles, but I love them both. And uh, we're here to talk about Agile and Scrum activities. We try to do it real quick. And please like and subscribe and tell your friends about our our show and our program, 5 a.m. Master Scrum. We try to get out there every day, 5 a.m. in the morning, and put out some material. So today, I'm going to keep it short because i got to go run in and help set up uh, the classroom and make sure everything's good and, and talk about Agile for two days, right? I'm doing it every day, but I do two days. So one of the things I want to talk about is a classic Agile Scrum thing, pointing and sizing of, of work and stories. I was listening to something on my road down about taking the largest story size and then go from there and using your Fibonacci series numbers. Um, I kind of disagree with that from a, a, a practical standpoint. I like to, here's my take, take something that they see on a regular basis, a good size story that they, most groups have worked before um, that they would think would be an average size story. And I go from there. When we do relative sizing, when we go higher or lower. So like if I had a story that had connection to three or four databases, um, maybe some front end work, some back end work, um, maybe a little bit of data analysis, building up some uh, data sets, maybe I'd make that a size three. But I also would ask, and let's get back before I do the three. I ask teams, what do you want to pick for your average number? Because I like making it simple, right? None of this high flute and calculations, half point, triple point, quarter point, third point, crazy stuff like that, right? So I say, hey, look, there's a one, there's a two, there's a three, there's a five, and then there's an, there's an eight, and then you can go more. I ran out of fingers, right? There's a 13. So what I typically say, what do you want to use for your average number that you averagely typically do? Is you, typically it's a three or a five. I like three, and the reason why I pick three, and this is what I'd recommend. I mean, every team is different, so you gotta let your teams pick. I go three, I have a two and a one, so I go smaller, and I also have a five and an eight, which goes bigger, and I could do a 13, which is like super huge, right? So I like threes, some teams do fives, but I first thing I ask them, just off the top of your head, don't overthink it, right? Simple, simple, simple. What is what number would you like to use? A three gives you or five, right? And how big the sizes are. So if your average work, your normal day, let's say it's a three. And now like I said, what I was going into, a couple maybe one or two database things at front end work, some back end analysis, um, maybe a couple connection points through different systems, right? So that would be your average work because you have a whole stage and you got to promote it and you got to go through firewalls and you got to get permission, right? So typically your average work entails that. Now, what I do is say, okay, so that's your average work. Let's say you're just doing a job that just a couple fields, a minor add to a database, um, but I'm not changing anything that I currently have. So that would be smaller than the three. So it's either going to be a two or one, and your team decides what it's going to be. I still got to do some back end, front end. Got to do some testing for some data we didn't have before. So maybe it's a two, right? And then um, maybe you have some really simple story. All we need to do is add two fields and add them to the current report, and it's no big deal. And that's a one, right? So how, see how quickly that is? And then if it's more complicated, let's say... Um, we did five databases or something like that, and we had to connect them all. So maybe that's a five because there's more people and we're going to put a lot more stuff so there's more work. One, I would ask you a question, can we break that down into smaller biz business value chunks? But then it depends, right? But then when you do the numbers, so we talked about like how much work. Have you noticed I said nothing about hours, right? 
and that's a whole nother story which we'll talk in another session um but it's it's what that is so the other thing i would think about is a couple influences is it simple is it something we've done a lot of if it's one of those two things i would downgrade the points from before so let's say the first time you do something it was average it took all that stuff but now we do it all the time we know the systems we've been in them before you might want to downgrade the points because it doesn't take as much thinking to solve the problem so as it gets simple or if you've done it maybe it takes more time and i'm going to talk about hours maybe it takes still takes five hours to do something or eight hours or whatever however you've done it so much t time it really it's a no-brainer you know exactly what to do i just need time to get it done so then you would lower the point value, right? Another thing which you would go the other way and raise the point value is for complexity, risk, unknowns. So as I was demonstrating before, maybe which is three, three database connections, but now I want to do five or six database connections and take this piece of data and feed it into five other different systems. So maybe it's more complex, so you bump up the numbers, right? But I also want to talk about risk and unknowns. Maybe they're asking you to the first time to tap into LinkedIn or Google or Facebook and collect some information, um, build a new API that didn't exist before, tap into a different API that you have never tapped into before, um, pull in data from a new place. That is risk and unknowns. When you have things you haven't done before, up the point. So if it was normally what you see, hey, we've done APIs before, we have connected. Um, so it's normally a three-point average story because we do it all the time. What I would say, if it's a new API, a new connection, I would bump up the points. And the reason being, is why you should just do it anyhow, but... Um, you don't know what's going to come out of the system. So you're going to tinker more and do some more iterative development and try some things out that you wouldn't necessarily do with something you've done before. Plus, you got to get used and they're going to talk to more people and it gets a little more complex, right? So you bump the points up. So that's what I want to talk about relative sizing. I don't think you should start at the top, like a 13 point, and work your way down. I think you should start at the middle and you do work your way smaller or larger based on the complexity. If it's less complex, lower. If something you've done, lower. If it's more complex, higher. If it's risky un or unknown, move it up. So that's just something to talk about from point sizing. And I hope you're uh, liking this. Now the next thing, as we are here at 5 a.m. Master Scrum, and hoping you're liking and subscribing, I just wanted to talk about recruiting. I think I'm going to put a whole playlist out there for HR and recruiting from an Agile perspective because I was just talking to one of my recruiters the other day about stuff and we're just chatting. And um, I do want to help them because I want all my Scrum Masters and Agile coaches and I know and work with to have good jobs. And I want to make sure they get um, where they need to be because there's plenty of work out there I want to share. I think everybody's good. So, and, and sometimes you need help, and that's why I'm doing the show. Just to coach you along as you get for new Scrum Masters and Agile coaches. And just people working in Agile or interested in it. So anyway, I was talking to a recruiter. And I'm going to help them out. I'm going to do something in Philly and just build something up and put stuff on the web. And just, not to make money, just to make sure everybody's working. Because, you know, everybody's win-win, right? So... You know, one of the questions I got as a, when I was getting recruited from some people, and I knew they knew nothing about what they were talking about, is they would ask me, like, do I have a PMP or do I have a, an SCM or, you know, a, a CSM degree or, or certification? And what's in, in my, there might be a PSM or something like that. And I go, one, I don't think you even know what those certs are. And you're just reading off a resume, which is kind of sad. But I go with it, right? Because I'm like, if you ever looked at my resume and people talk to me, you got a lot of letters and certs. So yeah, it was a long journey. Maybe we'll talk an episode about that. And maybe I'll do a whole uh, video on that. But 
when they ask you, like if they're trying to evaluate whether someone's a good scrub master or a good agile coach, and we're talking about someone, someone asked me one time, well, tell me about daily scrum. Do you do, do you do daily scrums? I mean, like, I've been an agile coach and a scrum master for seven years. I think I've done a few daily scrums in my time. And I've done multiple teams. So if you take multiple teams every day, it's called a daily scrum. I've probably done thousands of them, right? And they're like, oh. But I don't say that. But I'm just like, okay, yeah, sure. I think a better question from an HR person, what do you like about the ceremonies? So if you're going to interview people, I think I want to educate them on, on, on the their basics of the ceremonies. But they should ask questions like, well, what do you like about daily scrum? And let the passion of the scrum master, the agile person, the developer, come out and what, what they see in the benefits of a daily scrum, why they like to do it. Because if they come out and say they don't like it to do it, they shouldn't be a scrum master and they shouldn't be an agile coach. Definitely not an agile coach and probably not a scrum master. And if you want to develop an agile, you have to communicate. That's why we have our daily scrum. So anyway, I think they should ask the questions more about ceremonies and what they like and what they are passionate about in scrum. And not that I check the box, do you do daily scrums? Do you do sprint planning? Do you do, uh, you know, PI planning? Because uh, I know they don't know anything about that. So I just laugh. I bet I go with it. Anyway, so that's the end of our show. Um, I'm going to go you know, wrap it up real quick. But uh, please like and subscribe to 5 a.m. Master Scrum. I just learned that I can't do uh, live postings from my cell phone yet. So I'm recording this, and then I'm going to post it up, and then we're going to see how it works. But I love you all, and have a great day, and have fun. Bye.